I mean, I guess my whole life I was into history and into to the way civilizations have uh, basically been set up and the elites have dominated them. And so once I had a chance to then go to college and basically hear the drivel, uh, the false political system they were trying to teach us, I realized that uh, much of what uh, they were pushing was a fraud. I mean, really, we have a corrupt elite, as we've had corrupt elites all throughout history, that is attempting to dominate and control populations. And so really it was self-evident. I mean, the founding fathers said, don't trust the government, guard your liberties, tyranny always comes, uh, you know, stand up for your freedom. So really, uh, I, I, I have always been somewhat awake to tyranny, but then obviously over the years, going back about 12 years ago, I got more involved in researching and found out a lot more. Now the key to what you're talking about is not partisan politics, the left or the right. Yeah, I mean, the analogy is it's like a football team owner who owns both teams mm -hmm. that go to the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Either way he wins, mm -hmm. but he wants to keep it real quiet that he owns both teams. Mm -hmm. So regardless of who wins, even if you have a real contest going on out on the field, uh, the establishment uh, globalists who are trying to build this one world government, they win. And some would say, yeah, but still it's a real football game. No, they set the rules. They put who they want into the game. They direct and control who is going to win that election. Uh, and so the Republicans and the Democrats will fight basically over a bunch of petty issues, mm -hmm. but that's just rhetoric. When it gets down to brass tacks, they're unified. Now, when you talk about the global elite, uh, we're going beyond globalization. Globalization is a part of this, but it's really just one spoke on a much larger wheel. Uh, what would you say to those people that are stuck in this left-right paradigm only seeing the globalization aspect of the situation? I don't know what's wrong with them. I mean, I know so many leftists out there who think big government's going to save them, but large corporations that are bigger than many governments, they're actually lobbying for big government. Mm -hmm. They're actually uh, trying to create large mechanisms of the state that they control, that they can then dominate populations with. Mm -hmm. Of the hundred biggest economies, the U.S. being the largest, uh, 40 of the hundred largest economies are not countries. They're not states. Uh, they are private companies. And they have their own mercenaries. They have their own security teams. Uh, they have their own black ops squads that spy on other companies and governments. Mm -hmm. They have moles in our government. And basically, they've gone from having moles in our government to controlling our government. Mm -hmm. But they know the public's getting wise to it, so they use their uh, very uh, sophisticated PR firms to, to, again, create the illusion of political freedom, the, the illusion of political choice. Now, on your website and many other websites, like what really happened in addition to InfoWars, which uses a lot of your stuff, you're pulling from the mainstream documented evidence, but a lot of people don't see that when they walk down the street and see the front cover of USA Today. What tips could you give on how to decipher what's going on through the mainstream? Well, I mean, it's a process. There's different types of news. But you'll have something where somebody being paid by the CIA plants fake stories uh, in the New York Times about Saddam's uranium. Mm -hmm. And you have people like Armstrong Williams getting hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to go on TV and push big government social welfare programs uh, that Bush is peddling uh, like No Child Left Behind. Or we find, but there are thousands of people in the media who do lie. Mm -hmm. I mean, they actually get paychecks from the government. Then, just in 2004 alone, last year, there were, uh, what was it, just $76 million in one particular federal program. Bush spent $76 million uh, paying for fake newscast and airing uh, fake newscasts pushing his prescription Medicare drug program. But, but, but these were aired. I saw these in Austin. These were payoffs to the local media to air fake newscasts that looked like some type of news production and never told you that it was an infomercial for the federal government. So the government's using our money now to pay for overt propaganda. You know, not just paying off media people, not just planting stories, but, but outright manufacturing. 
Then you have other news reports, thousands of reporters who aren't on the payroll, who file reports on the news wires, AP, Reuters, places like that. And their big stories never make it onto the nightly news, never make it into uh, the front page of the newspaper that 98% of the public gets their news from. Mm -hmm. So all we do at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com is write our own articles, interview our own guests, go directly to the source every single day. Uh, but we also go and comb the news wires mm -hmm. and look at the news that gets blacked out mm -hmm. or the news that the gatekeepers are able to stop. And we take it, put it on the website, and then we're able to magnify it. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do. We take the real news that mainstream media is reporting that nobody ever heard of, and we expand on it. And then we research it further and then add more details to the picture. And so there's, there's outright propaganda media, then there's real mainstream media that never gets any attention that we magnify, and then there's spin. And spin is the biggest. Uh, spin is where they say, isn't it wonderful? There's a move to encourage all children to take chips. It will keep them safe. And so we go, well, is it a good idea for all of us to have microchips and be tracked by the government? Can we trust the government? You know, isn't this bizarre? Or they'll have, you know, Andy Rooney on, on, on uh, or we, we've got examples of people like, like Andy Rooney at the end of, uh, you know, a 60 Minutes program saying every American needs a mark, needs a chip to prove they're a good person. Mm -hmm. So we're not claiming they want us to take chips, even though we have the documents long before it was on the news. We actually have Andy Rooney saying it. We actually have the, the uh, different pundits like Sean Hannity saying, this is great, every child needs a chip. We have them on video saying it. So, so they're spin, where they're in your face admitting this evil. We're coming to confiscate your guns, but it's for your safety. We take that admission and go, no. We unspin it and say, or you could say put our own spin on it and say, no, this is not a good idea. So that's the third type. Then you've got the fourth type, and that's documents, government leaks, uh, just going to thomas.loc.gov, Library of Congress Online, reading new bills as they come out, listeners reading bills, flagging subsections for us. Uh, here's an example. One of my friends works at the Capitol. He hears a new bill's coming up from a lobbyist to put a transponder on all of our inspection stickers in 06 to tax us down every major road. I hear it. He tells me what bill it's probably going to be in when it comes out. It comes out in a bill. I'm watching for that bill. I tell listeners to watch for that bill. I forget about it. A week later, a listener goes, I watch for it. Here's the bill. In the bill, we're going to put transponders on your cars. We're going to tax you by the mile on your inspection sticker. Not just where you enroll yourself to go through certain toll roads. Every major road will be a toll road. So then there's also original source research and documentation. And that's a large part of what we do. That type of research, original research, is what gets Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com, the traffic, the original viewers. That's what we're really known for and respected for is catching things. But I think the most important thing we do is unspin their propaganda and then also catch them in outright lies. So it's all part of a multifaceted, multivariate effort. At the same time, finding those news articles that are true and documented but that didn't get any attention. Another thing you guys focus on quite a bit at InfoWars is this police state control grid, as you put it, being set up all around us. Let's talk a little bit about, in just a few topics, cameras, biometrics, and everything. It's beautiful. We want it. Our kids will be safe. That's the spin. Uh, what is the reality? How deep does this surveillance society go? It's a total slave grid. Everything you do will be tracked. Everything you do will be controlled. Uh, for 33 years, every child that's born in America has blood taken. And you're told it's for the health department to test for a blood disease. Why don't they just test there? Well, I've had congressmen on my show who admit it. And it's the same system in England and Australia and New Zealand and Canada, what I call the echelon group of countries, because they all adopted echelon in the 50s through the NSA, mm -hmm. and they all adopt the same programs exactly under different mm -hmm. names. But uh, blood is taken from everybody at birth who was born in a hospital, and one is blood tested for diseases. The other ampule is sent to a federal illegal DNA database. So long before they started saying, we want a DNA database, everybody, which they're now doing, they were already doing it. Mm -hmm. So you talk about Big Brother. The government will abuse any power it gets. It always has throughout history. 
and they're going to use this to really abuse us. So now we're dealing with Hurricane Katrina and FEMA treating basically the people that were down there like crap. And so now we're looking at what? Gun confiscation and home seizures. It's happening. I mean, the New York Times gleefully reported, uh, here's the article right here, and it says, New Orleans begins confiscating firearms as water recedes. And this is after the few looters and people had gone. This is the middle class areas that weren't flooded, mm. that are up on the rim or the bowl. And they go into middle class homes and they beat people up. They take their guns. The police have been caught looting more than anybody else in the city. That's the way it always is. Armies always loot. Again, we can't trust them. Uh, but uh, waters were receding across the flood beaten city today as police officers began confiscating weapons, including legally registered firearms from civilians. Why are police calling us civilians? That's a military term. Again, that's the martial law. From civilians in preparation for mass forced evacuations of the residents of the city. And they said by disarming them, they can't resist when we force them to leave. So again, the UN said back in 2000 at a Unidir summit, they said civilian ownership of firearms threatens the legitimate power monopoly of the state. And so they call it a power monopoly. They think a power monopoly is legitimate. I think it's illegitimate. Uh, a power monopoly is a dictatorship. And so all New Orleans is is a giant training op to, to condition the public to accept troops, to accept lockdowns, to accept gun control, to accept families being broken up. The whole thing is a giant drill. In Portland, Oregon, we have started the loudspeaker. There are three bills, one in the House and two in the Senate, to eliminate cable access as we know it and stop information like this from getting out. The same bills are introduced here in Texas. Mm -hmm. And again, the same type legislation for every other similar issue is being introduced simultaneously in major European and Western countries. And, and everywhere. And, and they're moving to regulate the Internet. They're, re they're, they're moving to regulate free speech everywhere. They have free speech zones at protest. They arrest people for demonstrating peacefully. Mm -hmm. Everywhere this paradigm is expanding. So being true patriots, our solution would be to, I would say, get as much avenue, get our fingers everywhere we can the alternative media, whether it be through the paper, the internet, while we still can, and cable access television. Yeah, and this is really good news that they're panicking. I mean, the moves to regulate internet speech, if you criticize the government, oh, you got to have a license to do that, you know, uh, uh, election reform laws. How is election reform doubling the amount of money corporations can give, but then saying they want to regulate my political blog? Mm. Well, I don't endorse any of these parties. What kind of problems have you had lately, uh, especially when you were covering the London bombing about a month back? Well, we had police everywhere we went. We would just peaceably be walking around talking to people. And uh, we would have the police walk over and go, well, give us your name and information. We write down who you are. We're putting you in a database. And then days after I left, they'd already introduced the legislation, uh, they banned protesting anywhere around the parliament. And uh, luckily, I was there right before they banned it. It was one of the last people to be able to bullhorn the parliament, mm -hmm. uh, which was, uh, but, it, but, but it's sad to uh, see that happen. So everywhere there's these moves to clamp down on free speech. And, you know, sp speech is speech we don't necessarily like. I don't like the Ku Klux Klan. I don't like uh, Mecha and La Raza. Uh, you know, Hispanic uh, uh, supremacist groups. Uh, I don't particularly like some of the stuff Louis Farrakhan says about white devils, or he used to say. But still, I will fight to the death for his right to say it. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't do that, we're all going to lose our free speech. And folks, they arrested over a dozen, but seven of them got had the charges, uh, uh, you know, were continued on, uh, against them. Seven Christians who prayed on a street corner at an outfest uh, in Philadelphia a year and a half ago, they were charged and churched off of the Justice Department and, uh, when he was at the Justice Department as Ashcroft's deputy. Chertoff actually advised uh, the state how to prosecute him under hate laws for praying they said that it was hateful and they were facing 47 years in prison. And this was actually in the mainstream news and pundits were on the radio going, put him in prison, put him in prison. So uh, I, I, this is an example. I've also interviewed people who are at an unannounced Bush rally, 500 Bush worshipers on a street corner, and up pulls a uh, uh, you know car full of people that are against Bush. 
They get out. They have signs saying no blood for oil. They're peaceful. The Secret Service says arrest them, and they get six months in federal prison. Mm -hmm. And the federal judge says, yeah, we say you can't protest, but the Bush people can demonstrate for Bush. Mm -hmm. So we see this attack on free speech everywhere, and it's got to be resisted. Uh, there are a lot of people that are still under a rock right now. Do you think there's hope for those people? What's it going to take for the average American, European, Asian, human being for that matter, to understand how deep this corrupt system goes? Well, the tighter the globalist squeeze, the tighter the New World Order squeezes, the more resistance is going to be formed, and they know that. That's why they've built up this huge police state mm. as a preemptive attempt. They've done this before. They're the controllers of empires, you know, the masters of empires, the lords of empire. Uh, you know, they've done this over and over again. And uh, it's going to take people peaceably resisting. It's going to take people inside the system. It's going to take people that uh, work in the system to have the courage to see what they're part of, to get past their fear, and to join humanity against these dehumanizing forces. Uh, and I think we're going to win. I mean, mm -hmm. the human species has been through this before, and I think we're going to turn the corner. I've already seen an awakening. I mean, 10 years ago, people looked at me like I was a space alien. Now, I might get 500 emails that agree with me and one email that disagrees with me. Mm -hmm. And the person can't even complete sentences and can't even spell with a spell checker. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're literally almost retarded. And uh, again, my, my websites are not even near the biggest Patriot websites, the biggest truth-telling websites. And they are among the biggest on the web. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're gigantic. Uh, so, and, uh, but that's also humbling at the same time. There's also a flip side to all of this. There's a lot of alternative press, a lot of alternative media out there that just you know, just because the public doesn't trust the mainstream media, just because the public's waking up, a lot of them are like children. And so they go out and they believe anything that somebody's saying as long as they claim it's alternative. Oh, I have a magic machine for $1,000 that will heal you. Or, oh, I've got these vitamins that will you know heal you. Or I've got this nose spray that will make you not have a heart attack. And... Then people run into these opportunists, and then it kind of discredits things for them, and they get out of the movement. People need to not believe what I've said. They need to check out what I've said. You need to research what I've said. You need to look into what I've said to verify it. You know, Ronald Reagan would say this, trust but verify. And I, and I agree with that statement. I'm not a huge fan of Ronald Reagan, but I agree with that statement. Trust but verify. And so don't just believe every person out there that's on a soapbox. In fact, you can trust yourself. You know that you mean well. You should become a leader. That's the key in this fight. And Dole, Alan Dole said Americans don't read. As we get ready to close here really quickly, million dollar question to Alex Jones. You've heard it before. If all this is true, if all this is accurate, why are you still around? Well, I get that question all the time. I mean, why are so many people alive? I mean, I don't want to compare myself to George Washington or somebody like Mahatma Gandhi. I mean, I, I'm just a little foot soldier in all of this. But if they kill me, it will only give attention to what I've done in my work. Mm -hmm. Also, there are thousands of prominent people of my stature that are speaking out, that are involved, that are informed. People who are more involved, people who are more influential. And, you know, I don't people think that there aren't the occasional trials and tribulations, but those are really rewarding and invigorating and energizing. I mean, right here in the studio in Austin, Texas, uh, I, I guess it was about eight years ago, I uh, or longer, uh, I walked out in the parking lot and four guys assaulted me. And Mike came out after they left and I fought back and fought him off. And you know, I was bleeding all over the place and a broken nose. And, uh, you know, Mike seen it firsthand. I was told, you shut up, you stop talking about this or we're gonna hurt you. And I went on air and I said, I'm not gonna do one TV show a week. I'm going to do two a week, and I'm not going to do one radio show a week. I'm going to go seven days a week, and so and and so and then every time I get death threatened, I've gotten death threats before. I just say, well, you just do what you have to do. Aren't you a coward? Don't you feel sorry for yourself? What kind of future are you looking forward to? And I just hang the phone up. And I haven't had those threats in a long time because they know I'm far beyond uh, you know going back. I can't go back, mm -hmm. and uh, they're deep down afraid. They're ashamed. A lot of these minions. They're getting a paycheck to do this, and a lot of them feel bad. You know, it's like, hey, I'm, I mean, to use a popular Hollywood analogy, it's like Tony Montana at the end of Scarface when he goes, those are little kids. I'm not going to blow up those little kids. You die! You know, <laughs> I mean, you know, it, 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 seriously. Right. I mean, it comes down to that humanity in people. Right. They don't have enough killers. Right. 
They could assign killers to go kill me, but the few killers they've got are so busy killing other people and, and you know killing other people that didn't pay them their drug cut or you know didn't you know they're too busy raiding Manuel Noriega. They're too right. busy you know not letting Saddam have a fair trial. Right. They're too busy going after all their business partners to ever go. You know, I mean, someday that day may come, but it doesn't matter. I'm not going to live as a slave. Listen, the number one cause of death is automobiles. I mean, what it, it kills like 14 times uh, every year. What guns do? Mm. Swimming pools kill four or five times what uh, guns do. You know, and my point is, why do they want to ban guns? But, but I digress. I still get in my car, and we go out on highways and go 80 miles an hour with 18 wheelers right beside us, and blowouts, and we drive by smashed cars. And if you stopped and looked, which I've rendered aid before, you know, some woman splattered up against a guardrail, half cut in half, with her life pumping out of her body. You know, I've seen stuff like this. But she, you know what? Her husband's going to go bury her. He's going to drive in a car to do it. Mm -hmm. Number one cause of death. We get an Indy 500 death race 2000 systems just to transport ourselves, just in transportation. Mm -hmm. and, and we're not all stricken with fear and afraid because it's just accepted. Everybody does it. Well, what I do is a little bit dangerous, but, you know, it's for humanity and it's for my children and it's for, it's for the future of civilization. And I stand on the shoulders. I exist. We have all this freedom that's still, you know, kind of uh, starting to evaporate but still left there because other people sacrificed. I mean, they really did walk in the snow 100 miles and drag giant cannons down Ticonderoga with a trail of blood from their shoeless feet to defeat the British. You know, they really did do all of that. And I have a debt to humanity myself to do this. Plus, fighting corruption is a drive. I mean, these are degenerate, inbred scum. They must be resisted. Last question. A lot of people in these times, as they get this information, they also seek at the same time in their own way to find who they are, about who they are spiritually to learn to start actually loving your neighbor and start caring for your family. What are your thoughts on that? Well, that's the golden rule. Do unto others as you have them do unto you and give up your life, um, give up your life for your brother, uh, for your neighbor, for somebody that you don't even know. People in this society, people think that you get ahead because you screw everybody. They think you get ahead because you only care about yourself. They think you get ahead because you're self-centered. Ah, so what, I'm worried about myself. In a climate like that, you get tyranny. 4% of the population produced half the world's wealth. We didn't steal our wealth in America to the extent of other countries. Now we're being used as the group to go steal other people's wealth. But 4% but of the population got half the world's wealth because we had liberty. Not total liberty, we weren't perfect, but we had more liberty than anybody else. And so freedom, ingenuity, all of this stuff migrated here. The best minds, you know, the, uh, the criminals, the outcasts, the whatever, came here for freedom. And so when you only care about yourself, you lose everything. When you really do care about others, and that means not mindlessly, but when you really do judiciously care about others and get involved, then things start to change. And we're a nation that expects everything instantaneously. We're a world that's decadent in a wash in our own prosperity. It's, 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 it's euthanizing us to the point of we just expect it all instantaneously. And that's not where freedom, that's not where happiness comes from. And so uh, there's going to be a rude awakening for a lot of people. Things are going to get worse before they get better. But I think in the end we're going to defeat this thing. And I hope people will visit Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. And Alex, uh, nice talking to you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Infowars.com. We're about out of time. 